tax day this year, April 18th, because of the holiday in DC. And most people are, you know, happy because they got back a big refund and they filed back in January, February, March. And they don't care. But the people I care about today are the people that actually have to pay, write a check out to Uncle Sam, file but can't pay the full amount, they're panicking over what do I do? Do I file anyways, even though I don't have the money? Stress, 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 and anxiety. But at the same time too, given the current climate that we have in Washington and people fighting over taxes, especially with the uh, Tea Party running Congress now, we have this whole issue of, damn, I paid too much money in taxes. And really, historically speaking, really that's not the case at all. As a percentage of gross domestic product, taxes have really been at an all-time low, really, especially during the high income tax bracket. You know, the top, you know, five to one percent people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett that really enjoy a lot of write-offs and lower capital gains rates. But at the same time, too, you have these middle class people that are always pissed off that I pay a lot of money in taxes, I don't get shit. And, well, that's the case because we have a progressive tax system. But what really gets me, though, and this is like the biggest one, and this never really comes up, especially this time of year, is the earned income credit. Basically, people that work a job and they basically get just as much money back from the government as they made working. Now, a lot of people on the right, um, Tea Party Republicans and whatnot, are always like, damn it, this is horrible. These people are getting a welfare check from the government. You know, I'm paying for it because I get my taxes taken out, and then the freaking inner city person gets an $8,000 check, and this is totally horribly unfair, this and that. And you know what, though? I can relate to them because I'm a single guy. I don't own a house. I don't have any kids. So basically, I'm going to pay up the wazoo, and I pay like, you know, 1000 to $2,000 a year in taxes. I don't get anything, and that's my tax bill. But, you know, if I was a single mom living somewhere, taking a bus to Burger King to work, you know, I'd get back an $8,000 check and be laughing all the way um, to Walmart with my Emerald card or iPower card from H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt. And... The thing that people have to realize is that this earned income credit, although it started, I think, under Carter, in reality, Reagan actually was a really big endorser of it because, oh, well, we're giving something to people, but they have to work for it. And at the same time, too, really, if you dig down deeper into the whole earned income credit, it's really part of the whole Milton Friedman supply side economics where a poor person isn't going to go to work because if they get taxed on their money, it's like a 100% tax rate. So they're gonna say, hey, why bother going to work? Why bother getting a job? And it's really, really, really funny to actually find that out because the whole argument we're having right now is should the top tax rate go back to Bill Clinton levels? You know, should higher income like 250 or more pay more in taxes we should cut their taxes to have a trickle down in the economy this and that but never once ever does the earned income credit get mentioned by the republicans and i just find that really 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 odd because their constituents are always the ones that hate poor people getting anything for nothing and that's really what the earned income credit is is basically people getting something for nothing where you know, why should I work overtime and make more money, but then get less back from the government as free money? It's stupid. Why would you work hard? Why would you take two or three jobs when you can work one job, make $8,000 a year, and get back $8,000? Or if I worked extra and I made $13,000 a year, or $5,000 extra working, I'm only gonna get back 5,000. To them, it doesn't add up in their head. And this is something that really has to be addressed because, you know, I just, on principle, don't like the idea that we just give people for basically just 
doing a bare minimum to get by and basically working just enough to get the most money back from the government for nothing. And that's not even counting, you know, what states give people back. Because if you live in like New York or California or Massachusetts, some, you know, blue state, the state itself gives you more money on top of what the federal government gives you. I mean, I feel sorry for the people who live in Florida or, you know, Texas that don't have a state income tax. You know, all they get is from the feds and that's it. So, you know, I don't know what to say about the cost of living in those states, but maybe that's a part of it because you don't have that governmental flow of money getting swished around all over the place. But I am starting to think too at the same time that if they cut out the earned income credit, the whole country would really fall apart. I mean, I have a friend of mine that works at Walmart, not Walmart, or Target, or one of those big box places. I can't say which one. I really don't want to uh, say, you know, Best Buy, whatever. And he said in February, he had 15 people come into his store one day in the electronics department and buy big screen HD TVs with emerald cards or h and block cards, um, or the Jackson Hewitt cards, whatever, you know, fast income tax preparation cards that come back. And I'm thinking to myself, the government's giving you $8,000 and you have it because you're claiming kids, you know, two to three kids, you're supporting your kids, you don't want your kids to live in poverty. You're probably getting food stamps on top of that. Wouldn't you spend money for your kids, I don't know, education, tutoring, books, um, you know, a computer for them, a laptop, you know, things like that to help them advance themselves instead of going to get yourself a big screen TV and a Blu-ray player. It just really, just, I don't know. I think really if the government's going to keep on doing this, it's basically giving low-income people money for nothing. For the most part, they are working so, you know, they're getting something for putting forth an effort. But I think the U.S. should do what Canada does, which is basically giving the people, you know, subsistence, whatever you call it, low-income support, transfer payments, whatever, but do it quarterly so they don't blow the money all at once. You know, so if you get any $8,000, you're going to get $2,000 in April. $2,000 in June, $2,000 in September, and $2,000 at the end of December around Christmas. So you don't blow it all in one store, you know? That's how I feel and that's what I think we should do because it seems like whatever is going on in Washington about taxes, about the budget deficits, about spending, the earn income credit is never, ever, ever mentioned between both parties because both parties, I guess, love it. The Democrats love giving money to people that are poor. The Republicans figure it's negative income tax, and that's good because it's negative income tax, and you know people have to work for it anyways. So it fits in a whole Reagan-esque Keynesian, not Keynesian, sorry, um, Reagan-esque Milton Friedman, you know, supply-side ac economics. So not gonna do it, but I think really they should basically do it quarterly and really look at it really under a microscope and see really if it's going to the right places or not. That's about it. Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.